Baby Warren is 10 days old, a miracle child for Amy Yuan, who had suffered miscarriages. Her pregnancy happened at a time when she was trying to raise another child, so to speak, a startup called Proven. It offers data-powered, customized skincare products. Her co-founder and CEO Ming Zhao also found out she was pregnant around the same time. It was a surprise since she was in the middle of freezing her eggs so she could focus on launching the business. At first, my reaction was that this is the worst of timings because, um, you know, with all the news, you know how hard already it is for female founders to uh, found as well as be invested uh, in for a startup. And with a baby, it's just, you know, an additional level of scrutiny. The new website looks like this. Because of that, they decided to defer their acceptance into Y Combinator, considered the Harvard of startup accelerators in Silicon Valley. The pair would have pitched their startup to 200 investors on demo day. The advice came from the program's advisors. One was very pointedly uh, like, um, we don't want you to be on stage during demo day talking about your company, presenting your company while we're both visibly pregnant. You know, you're going to get a lot of attention, but it's not the type of attention that you'd want. That attention reflects a kind of bias known as maternal bias or momism. Maternal bias, I call it the most deadliest of the types of implicit bias directed towards women. So women who are mothers are 79% less likely to be hired as compared to other women. They make on average $11,000 less. San Diego-based diversity and inclusion specialist Kristen Nepper says it creates a lose-lose situation. There's this idea that you will want to be home with your child and if you don't want to be home with your child, then there's something wrong with you as a woman. Leila Saborian knows firsthand. When she was pitching her educational startup, Chef Kuchelu, to all male investors. One investor literally asked me, he said, well, you know, I really only invest on people who are 100% dedicated to the project, and that means no outside distraction. Is that you? And I said, yes, that is me. He said, so you don't have kids? I said, no, I do have kids. She didn't end up getting any funding. Questions kept coming. They would tell me, why now? You know, why wait till age 40 to start a company? Or, you know, who, who's going to take care of your kids when you do this? She gave up entirely on venture funding and instead applied for public funds. Pregnancy is such a natural part of life, right? It's a continuation of the human race. And yet, um, in, in startup and VC world, it's seen as such a detriment. Even before Warren was born, Amy says many of the male software engineers on the team quit when they found out she was pregnant. Those are the people that I knew before, and we, be, we were friends for many months, and we have worked on a product together. Crunchbase found that right now only 17 percent of startups have a female founder, and that number hasn't grown in the past five years, even though many tech giants are now showing that work-life balance is important. Amy has built this database. Ming and Amy are pushing their startup forward and rejoining Y Combinator in January. I think the best way to really um, make it better for future generations of female founders is to do well and to, you know, create a unicorn or at least create a really successful business so that people can see, hey, it doesn't matter if you're either female or female with child or whatnot. In Palo Alto, Betty Yu, KPIX 5.